studio is 215-490-9832. That's 215-490-9832. You can catch us on timeforawakening.com. You can catch us on blacktalkradionetwork.com. You can catch us on ourradionetwork.com. Or you can go to the app and hit and click Time for the Awakening Radio. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, good evening. Dr. Umar Johnson, his third appearance, not once, not twice, but three times, he is here. And I want you to call us up, 215-490-9832. We're talking about a little bit of everything this evening with our brother, Dr. Umar Johnson. Now, since he's last been here, Troy, he right. made the major announcement. We was at work, and I said, Troy, you said what? I said, Dr. Umar <laughs> made the announcement. You said what announcement? He got our sweatshirts? I said, no, he ain't got our sweatshirt, right. but he made the announcement about the school. Where is it? I said, we got to listen. So he's listening. I was on Instagram, and he got about 30,000 people watching at the same time, and he mentioned that the school will be in... Delaware. That's right. Yes, sir. I'm hyped like that. Delaware is the location where the school will be. So we welcome our brother back with us for the fir- for the third time, Dr. Umar Johnson. Peace and black power. Glad to be back. Can you hear me clearly there? Yeah, I can. Okay. okay. We got Good you, Good to brother. be back, fellas. First of all, I want to say congratulations. You pulled Thank it you. off, brother. You did what many thought that you could not do. They lied on you. They said you took the money. They said you were doing all kind of crazy things, but you did it, brother. Yes, sir. You did it. Yes, sir. Praise be to the Most High. Yes, sir. And the ancestors. The ancestors, brother. You did it. Now, first of all, I just want to say to you, what made you choose Delaware, man? Uh, I would say that I did not choose Delaware. Delaware chose me. Um, I had always thought for several years during this fundraising process that the school would be in Detroit. I really thought Detroit was the location because Detroit had so many schools that were available. And my number one pick was actually in Detroit, but we could not afford it. And then Chicago, I thought would also be a likely landing spot because of the amount of available buildings there. And we went all over the country. I was up in New York. I was in Jersey, Philadelphia at one point, Ohio, uh, Virginia, Virginia, which was the original first school, St. Paul's College. Now, the story of how we got the Delaware School is very spiritual, very spiritual. August the 21st of 2017, we celebrated the Nat Turner total solar eclipse. Y'all remember that? Mm-hmm. We did that down in Nat Turner Land. As you know, I'm born on that date. August 21st is very significant for me. I believe Nat Turner is a spirit god of mine for a lot of reasons. Anyhow, following the Nat Turner eclipse celebration, August 21st of 2017, I was checking LoopNet. And I always check LoopNet periodically for new schools. That's what I've been doing for almost five years. And the school popped up that said Wilmington, Delaware. And it looked extremely modern. Mm. So I contacted the realtor. It was a white male. Mm -hmm. He arranged for me to walk through the school. And I loved it. Four buildings. Two of them which were schools. The third one a gym. A fourth one another building. And I said I want this. This is it. Because there was nothing else on the block. Wilmington is a predominantly black city. Small, close enough to Philly. But still yet has its own separate identity. But they wanted 1.2 million. All we had was 750k, and at that point we had a little less than 750k because that was a year and a half ago. I refused to give up on it. There was a school in Atlanta that I was going to jump on, but then some domestic situations required that I stay in Philadelphia and not relocate. So I said, I can't do Atlanta. I gotta stay close. Where is this going to happen at? And so I kept on tugging at the owners, tugging at the realtor. 18 months later, by the grace of God, because we did not have a million dollars to buy this school, they were finally willing to throw in the towel, concede, and sell it to me for what we had. Mm. So we shouldn't even have that school. We did not have the money for it, but through the grace of God, it came to us. And I believe, going back to Nat Turner, that's why I'm wearing a hoodie today. I'm waiting on mine. Sir. I believe that the Nat Turner Army, and y'all going to get y'all hoodie next time. I got you. You going to get that Nat Turner hoodie. I got you. In fact, I might have had one for you. I might have had a large, but I got you. So, again, Nat Turner. I believe it was the energy of Nat Turner and the Nat Turner Army. And then I went to Cuba that Sunday. 
to get initiated into E5. My paternal grandfather was Cuban. Mm. So I went to Cuba for the first time, received my E5 initiation. So between two very spiritual events, the Nat Turner total solar eclipse of 2017 and my first visit to Cuba where I was initiated into E5, between those two dates, I got a chance to see the school. 18 months later, we end up with that very school. Mm. So I believe it was divine design the entire time. And I'm going to give you one more little spiritual nuance. I was coming from Newark, New Jersey, visiting a school for sale in Newark. When I came back, I went to the movies because I'm a movie buff. Mm. What's the movie starring Ice Cube's son? And who else is in the movie? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they rob banks. It, it's on, it's on uh, Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Netflix. What's Netflix. the movie with Ice Cube's son and 50 Cent? Ice Cube's son and 50 I'm Cent. I'm fine. Keep going. Anyhow. Keep going. I went to the movies to go and see that movie, right? I just came from looking at a Newark, New Jersey school. I'm sitting in the movie theater, right? And I'm brainstorming schools. Where are we going to get this school at? We don't have enough money. And guess what pops up on the screen? If you watch the movie, you'll see this. There's a scene early on. That shows the school. That shows the city. It says Wilmington, California. And I started texting some of my friends and I said, I'm sitting in the theater and Wilmington just popped up on the screen in the movie. And I got a little chill, right? That was about a year ago. Guess what? That was a spiritual premonition. Mm-hmm. It was Wilmington. I just needed to sit, sit tight and let God and the ancestors work it out mm-hmm. because it had already been decided before I knew it. Yes, it, was. Yes, it was. So this Thursday, mm-hmm. I'm going to be hosting a black family meeting in Wilmington, okay. Delaware, to introduce myself to brothers and sisters in that town. Because although Wilmington is only 20 minutes from Philadelphia, mm-hmm. of all the states in this country, I've spent the least amount of time in Wilmington, even though it's next door. I'm always in Jersey. I'm always in Maryland. I'm always in D.C. I just came back from New York, sold out lecture in the Bronx. Bronx. I was in Connecticut this past Sunday, jam-packed. But I rarely go to Delaware. I've only done two events in Delaware, so they need to learn me from me, not from you two. So it's just going to be a meet and greet. I'm going to tell them what my plans are, take some questions, and then we'll take it from there. But I am here to proclaim that now that we have the school, Wilmington, Delaware has just become for black people what Washington, D.C. already is for white folks. And that's the capital of black America. In fact, I'm already calling it Wilmington, D.C. But it don't stand for District of Columbia. It says for it stands for District of Black Consciousness. What was the name Wilmington, of the D.C. Uh, Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves. When you watch Den of Thieves, you're going to see Wilmington pop up in the corner. Mm. Okay. It said chills. Mm. And that was it. That was the message right there the whole time. I just didn't know. Eight, Sis- 18 months it took us to get it. Sister Melanie is on, on Facebook sure. line. And she, she wants to know what are the grades mm-hmm. that you will offer for the school? And do you have... Um, Agriculture. Okay. Great question. The grades, my personal intention is to start with third, fourth, and fifth. And the reason I want to strategically start with third, fourth, and fifth grade is those are the grades when our children begin to experience psychological dropout. See, physical dropout starts in the ninth grade. Psychological dropout starts in the third, fourth, and fifth. That's when they start disconnecting and de-identifying because of the way they're treated. Mm-hmm. The special left, the Ritalin, the ADHD, the abusive treatment by white teachers, right? I want to do third, fourth, and fifth. However, once the school has been restored and we start having open houses for parents and interest meetings, if I find out that we have more parents who are interested in the sixth grade or the first grade or kindergarten, then I will shift the grades that we're going to start with. So I have my plan, but that's a solved plan. I have to see where the interest is coming from. And the beauty of Wilmington, Delaware, Where it's situated on the eastern seaboard, it touches Pennsylvania. It touches Maryland. And it's a hop, skip, and a jump from New Jersey. So in keeping with my Pan-Africanist foundation, not only will boys from Delaware be able to go to the school, boys from New Jersey, Maryland, and Pennsylvania, we will be be able to educate African boys from four different states. Now, 
Because we're blessed with two school buildings, not one, we got two, right across the street from each other. One is the Frederick Douglass building, that's the big one. The smaller one is the Marcus Garvey building. As you know, at some point in time, we're going to bring the girls into the school, right? We won't start with the girls. I want to be clear about that. First year or two will be nothing but boys. But because we have an adjacent school right across the street, we may bring the girls in a lot sooner than I originally planned. Because one of the blessings of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is space. Mm. If I only had the Frederick Douglass building and I didn't get the other three across the street, it's still a win-win. Because in that building, you have a state-of-the-art gymnasium we can put over a thousand people in the gym alone. Mm. We have 16 classrooms. Mm. We have a separate lunchroom, a separate computer lab. Even without the three extra buildings, mm. we will be set with the Frederick Douglass building. Now you bring the Marcus Garvey building in it. That's an extra 8 to 12 classes. Then you bring the second gym into it, which is going to be the community center. But I'm also thinking about having that refitted and turning that into my black information and cultural cafe express which will be three floors one floor a bookstore another floor a vegan and vegetarian cafe where you can get your marcus garvey smoothie or your frederick douglas hoagie or your nat turner solid or your harriet tubman juice and then the top floor will be a place where you can socialize and just relax and maybe put a roof on top where, where people can go up top Excuse me, when the weather is good, yes. right, and just kept catch some of the rays of Amin Ra, the sun. So let me, let me ask you this: I'm, I'm hearing everything that you're talking about doing, and it's not a public, it's not a school. It's going to be uh, independent. Independent. Yes. So you know, how do you go about getting the money? Are you going to have more fundraising? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be people can make donations? Well, will there be a tu tuition connected to it? There will definitely be a tuition. Okay. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> there will definitely be a tuition. I hope, though, at some future point in time, 20 years out, minimally, because we have to be realistic, I would like to have an endowment set up like the universities and white private schools for black mothers. Single parent black women are the ones raising our babies. You understand? So I want to ease as much as possible the financial burden they will incur by trying to have children at our school. I'm also not giving up on our celebrities because although we know they're scared of revolution, they might feel comfortable sponsoring a couple children to go to the school as well as black businesses, black business owners, black churches. Because once this school opened up, Nobody would have seen nothing like what we got. So a lot of parents are going to be shaking at these community leaders saying, yo, listen, my boy need Dr. Umar. He don't need special ed. He don't need ADHD. He don't need a discipline school. He needs FDMG. Mm -hmm. Not ADHD, FDMG. You understand? <laughs> yes, sir. So with that, excuse me, being said, there are some loans on the table. Should I like to exercise that option? But it's the last option because that's economic slavery. Yes. As you know, there's really no controls on venture capital loans. When you take out a loan for a business, that interest, they can charge you whatever they want. There's very little control on venture capital loans, which means if I take out a million or two million dollar loan, by the time I pay that interest back, I could have bought 20 FDMGs. It simply isn't worth it. The beauty of where we are right now, Brother Jahid, is the fact that we own the building flat out. Ain't no mortgage, you understand me? Ain't no nothing. We own, it's ours. It is owned by black people 100%. It is ours. Now, speaking of tuition, most independent schools have to charge so much because they still have a mortgage on the property. We don't have a mortgage on the property. So we don't even have to factor in the mortgage and coming up with the tuition. Okay? We would just have to worry about maintenance and restoration. And right now, we're in phase two. Phase one was acquisition, buying the school. We got it. Phase two is restoration, bringing it back up to code. Mm -hmm. And then phase three is operation. Let's talk about restoration. This school was built with $13 million. This is a $13 million school. The only reason why we have to restore it is because the previous owners didn't have, for whatever reason, a sufficient enough security system on the building that would have prevent 
vandals from getting in mm-hmm. and stripping the piping of its copper. So as a result of that, a lot of damage was done for a couple petty dollars worth of copper, you see. But then let's look at the flip side. Had they not broken in and vandalized that school, you wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it. Wow. Because they would have been able to sell that thing for seven million easy right. if it had not been destroyed. The only reason why we got that school is because of the vandalism. Wow. But guess what? Even with the vandalism. Even with the vandalism, it's a beautiful school. We ain't got to worry about lead paint. We ain't got to worry about asbestos because it's not an old building. Remember, it just closed down three years ago when the charter school that occupied it lost their charter. Mm. So this is a blessing, predominantly black school. The whole block is ours. There's a boys and girls club right in back. Mm. We can rent their pool because we're going to have a swim team. What independent black school has a swim team? No Speedos. No Speedos. You understand? And then we have a large community park right across the street. (laughs) Okay. Now, what is the next goal? Okay. There's no way we're going to have the school open for August 21st, 2019. That's only six months from now. Right. That means you got to restore and prepare in six months. Nah. Not going to happen. What I would like to do is push the start date back to August 21st of 19, excuse me, 2020, which is the 100th anniversary of Marcus Garvey's first international convention. And it's the 100th anniversary of the red, black, and green flag. Really? Oh, yes. So we want to start school on the 100th, the centennial of the RBG. But restoration, that's operation. Get back to restoration. We have six months between this Friday March the 1st and August the 1st. What I would like to see happen is raise enough money between March the 1st and August the 1st, six months, to fully restore all four buildings and then have our quadricentennial 400-year celebration, 1619 to 2019, also including on top of the 400-year quadricentennial celebration. We celebrate Nat Turner, August 21st. We celebrate the Haitian Revolution, August 21st. We celebrate George Jackson's prison war, August 21st. And of course, the birth of the Prince of Pan-Africanism, August the 21st. I want to have a week-long celebration from August 20th to August 25th. Seminars, workshops, think tanks, food, vendors, entertainment, competition, swimming in the Boys and Girls Club, meditation, Lamaze, uh, uh, seminars for married couples, seminars for single people, seminars for special ed parents. I want that to be the 400 year celebration this August 21st, 2019. That's what we're working towards. So we want all your listeners.